One of the most important things is the actual diagnosis of unequal placental sharing. This is not an easy diagnosis to make and requires a good amount of ultrasound. And once the diagnosis is actually made, it's important to decide whether the unequal sharing is happening in addition to twin-to-twin -to -twin transfusion or if it's just a separate event and the issue really is not so much about the babies having an actual transfusion but more about one baby having less placenta available to give it what it needs than the other. When that is the case, the way to manage that pregnancy is hopefully a watch and wait type of situation. It's important to very carefully be followed with usually weekly and sometimes even twice weekly ultrasound to be sure that the smaller baby especially still has enough amniotic fluid around it, still is getting enough blood flow from the placenta, and is continuing to thrive. We look at many parameters for that baby, including the baby's heart function and the baby's brain function, trying our best to make sure that the baby is doing well and thriving. Ultimately, the, this, this expectant type of management, trying not to intervene, ends if the baby is not doing well and needs to come out. Some situations will overlap both unequal placental sharing with twin-to-twin -twin transfusion syndrome. And when that happens, you may need to have laser ablation. And that thi this kind of laser ablation will actually address the unequal sharing at the same time that it addresses the twin-to-twin -twin transfusion syndrome.